As we were already on this side of the earth, my mom and I decided to take a little pit stop in Taiwan for a five day foodie getaway. Taiwan airport because we're so hungry. The moment we landed, we went on a mission to find anything edible to satisfy the hangar that was settling in. We stumbled mm. across this little airport food court with about three things open, including this beef noodle soup shop. No food court in North America will ever compare to the food courts I've been to in Asia. While this was most likely the worst beef noodle soup in all of Taiwan, it was still very satisfying and probably the first vegetable I consumed in two weeks, so my body was very happy. Oh. We got to our hotel at around 10 p.m., which was right on time for our second dinner. I'd imagine love at first sight feels a little something like this. The night markets in Taiwan are my definition of heaven. An unending street lined with stalls and stalls of delicious goodies, from mountains of fried everything to long skewered items to charred grilled squids and refreshing shaved ice. But we were stopped in our tracks by the scallion pancake fried to a golden crisp, layered with sweet brown sauce and sprinkled with sesame seeds. Fresh, hot, and ridiculously delicious. The sweet and salty vibes always get me. I almost did get a second one, but some balls caught my eye. These adorable looking fried sweet potato balls didn't really have any hint of sweet potato to them, but I'm always down for anything fried and ball shaped. And then mother son and I just shared a very long chicken skewer before calling it a night. <laughs> mm. Our first food adventure of the day, some authentic luro fan or braised pork and rice. One of the simplest and most locally loved dishes. And this dish is gonna taste different all across Taiwan, like the ratio of fat to lean meat, or it can be sweeter or saltier. This one was like 99% fat, but that's what makes it literally melt in your mouth and the rice soaks up all the saucy gravy. It simply is just a bowl of comfort. We also got some side dishes and the most unforgettable one was the soft jiggly braised tofu. Oh my God, I could have eaten like six blocks. Next stop, beef noodles. It was like 5,000 degrees outside, so we thought it would probably be best to embrace the heat wave and sweat some more by getting a steaming bowl of $3 beef noodle soup. Beef noodle soup is actually the national dish of Taiwan. The meat was so tender and soft, and the broth was so deeply flavored. And the nudes were chewy and thick, and you can get as many refills as you want. I think this is the moment I realized every other bowl of noodles I've ever eaten has been a fraud. Yes! My night market cravings had yet to be satisfied, so we made our way to Roja Night Market, which is one of the most famous, therefore most packed, night markets in Taipei. The first thing I did was dive straight into the buns, called Gu Jiao Bing, or pork pepper buns. So flaky on the outside and stuffed with this like juicy, flavorful goodness on the inside. And all the delicious stuffing juices just absorb into the fluffy bun. Outrageously good. Trust me, the eating continued late into the night until our stomachs were completely stuffed with goodies. I knew I was going to be eating so much delicious food in Asia, so I wanted to show you guys what I ate and how I prepped for my trip. I made sure I loaded up on salads, I constantly stay hydrated, always ate my protein, and yes, killed myself in the gym to Caroline Gervin. And you can't forget the extra cardio sessions, and this one's a really important step. Things like eating out, dessert, ice cream, adding peanut butter to my oatmeal, drinking liquid calories. Yeah, I'm sorry to break it to you all, but all of those things, I ate and did as much as I wanted. I also took lots of rest days, I ate intuitively, and this one was crucial. I treated myself and my body with compassion and prioritized my health, which means absolutely no restricting, which means listening and trusting my body, which means giving myself permission to eat as much food and whatever kind of food I want on vacation, and it also means taking my vitamins. Ritual has actually been my go-to multivitamin these days, and I've also recently started using their Symbiotic Plus, which is a three-in-one prebiotic, probiotic, and postbiotic supplement to help support gut, digestive, and immune health. No gut health has been trending, but it's not just a trend, it's actually very important. Our gut is kind of the foundation of everything. It helps digest the food we eat, absorb nutrients, 
supplements and it uses it to fuel and maintain our bodies. I use Ritual because the best-selling gut supplements from the top five brands don't actually include a postbiotic. And recent research suggests that postbiotics have an equally important role, if not more important, in maintaining and improving our gut health compared to pre and probiotics. Each Ritual capsule is designed with a delayed release technology to help reach the colon instead of the stomach, which is an ideal place for probiotics to survive and grow. And just like all of Ritual's products, Symbiotic Plus is vegan-friendly and formulated without GMOs, major allergens, animal products, or artificial colors. And this is the biggest sale I've seen Ritual do this year, bigger than their New Year's sale, so don't miss out. You can get 40% off your first purchase if you just scan my QR code on the screen, or if you use my link that I will be putting in the description. This is the definition of my perfect kind of morning. Can we dance in the moonlight or hands if the mood's right? I feel like I can't come to Taiwan without eating Ding Tai Fung, known to be home to the world's best soup dumpling or xiao Bao, and it's been awarded the Michelin star five times, and they have some of the world's cheapest Michelin star food, so the three hour wait did not surprise me, but my stomach was not happy with me. We need to find a little sweet appetizer to entertain her before the main event. Mm, okay, I'm, I'm about to die. What the f I'm alive again. I feel like it should be illegal to sell mangoes this sweet. I literally couldn't stop myself from buying 10 more. These are the best mango I've ever had in my life. Wow. Finally, it was soup dumpling time. Now, these chefs are like dumpling scientists. It takes three years to train as a chef at Ding Tai Fung. That's almost like a college degree in soup dumpling making. Each dumpling is handmade meticulously to measure between precisely 4.8 and 5.2 grams. Wow, wow, wow. And with the filling, it must weigh between 20.8 and 21.2 grams. And every dumpling has 18 perfect folds, no more and no less. All of them have super soft, thin skins that encloses that treasured soup. And in my opinion, whatever way feels right for you is the right way to eat it. I like to do the nibble, drain, slurp, vinegar dunk, and devour. Now, I'm in no way a professional xiao eater, but I do have a mouth and I can tell you that these are freaking delicious. However, I have had better. Sorry, it's just personal preference. Wait, don't know where I'm going. I could cry. Is it worth two hours? However, I also have a weakness for wontons bathing in spicy, vinegary based sauces. Wonton! They are just so addicting. And these wontons had lovely, juicy chunks of shrimp in it too. And we also got fried rice and cucumbers and chubby veggie balls that were so satisfying to eat. It was like biting into a cloud. I'm so happy. And I've been seeing other people rave about these chocolate xiao long balls, so I needed to try oh her God. for myself. Chocolate xiao long ball. And the concept is genius, but it just tasted like melted chocolate in a very bland, flavorless, chewy skin, and it kind of made me really sad and disappointed. Honestly, everything here was delicious, but nothing was mind-blowing. A solid A-. minus. Before this Asia trip, I was very much a nervous wreck. I was going to meet other content creators. I had to be social, which freaks me out. I didn't know how to prepare, and my brain's first instinct was maybe we should go on a diet. I swear it's like a defense mechanism at this point. Due to all of the years of having that small voice in the back of my head convince me that my body was the problem, when I don't feel my best, I jump to the conclusion that to feel better, I need to change how I look, instead of actually looking into why I'm feeling like I'm not good enough. This is actually my second time in Taiwan. The last time I was here, I was 15 and I couldn't tell you what my favorite part was because I was miserable and hungry the entire time. The whole trip was just trying to find healthy food options, never surpassing my calorie limit and obsessing over how to maintain my weight. When I was younger, I really did believe people would like me more if I looked a certain way, that I would like myself more. But did obsessing over food and calories, feeling guilty about everything I ate or changing my body ever work? We all know it never does. I wanted to feel accepted and happier, but I'd never taken the time to learn how to accept and love myself. I needed to learn that, not change my body. Our bodies are not the problem. For me, it's likely always been a combination of low self-esteem, setting ridiculous, unachievable expectations for myself, and letting my insecurities get the best of me. Oh my god. <laughs> I've realized I'm never as fixated on how I look than when I don't like how I feel. I'm never as concerned about whether or not people like me than when I quietly dislike myself. Trying this snack. Crunchoco. I'm assuming it's gonna taste like crunchy chocolate. I never feel that need to control my body more than when I feel like I'm out of control of things happening in my life. Chocolate, hazelnut, and coffee. I find myself comparing my life and progress and my body with others when I forget my own worth. 
Nothing really changes when you just change your body, but everything changes when you change your mindset. From the way you see your body to how you speak to yourself, your relationship with food and exercise. And as a result, you truly do feel better, happier, stronger, healthier, and more confident. Wait, what the heck? So before this trip, instead of restricting and trying to eat less, I fed myself more, more love, more grace, more compassion, more time. Honestly, whenever you find yourself being mean to yourself, it's a pretty good sign that it's time to take a step back and give yourself a little more love. It's like we're waiting for a line at Disney World. <laughs> worth it, worth it. Oh, we're gonna order everything. <laughs> This place is famous for never not having a hysterically long line and their soy milk and breakfast beings. And I'm not even a soy milk drinker, but I am now. That is how transformative this soy milk was. Mm. So they have two kinds of beings here, a thick and a thin, and you can either stuff them with nothing, eggs or fried dough or all of the above, which of course we did. The thinner bing is a crispy oily fried sesame coated bing that was delightful. Mm. But my preferred being was the thicker of the two, crispy on the outside with chewy and fluffy layers that somehow also had an addicting hint of sweetness to it. And these soft egg and fragrant spring onions added the perfect touches along with that crispy, oily fried dough stick. Absolutely elite. We also got salty soy milk, which I've never tried before, but it was very intriguing. It had a weird curdled texture that I think happens because of the vinegar that's added along with the soy sauce and sesame oil to give it that salty soy milk vibe. Actually really impressed. But we don't know what is inside. This right ball whoa was unexpectedly my favorite item it's stuffed and heavy and dense in the best way possible it's just sticky rice packed with egg pork floss fried dough stick and some fermented vegetables it was so satisfying i don't know how to explain it but even though i've never lived in asia it somehow always tastes like home here oh my god oh my god we decided to be brave this afternoon and risk getting a heat stroke to go get some ice but not just any ice it's called ball of bean ice shavings drenched in a sugary syrup loaded with all the best toppings ranging from mung beans grass jelly, tapioca balls, red beans, fruits, peanuts, taro balls, and it literally tasted like cold sweet heaven in my mouth because as two very Canadian blooded humans, Asia in the summer with its like above 100 degree humid sticky sauna like temperatures was definitely a physical and mental challenge for us. We hid indoors all day most days for our own health and safety, but it's actually quite nice spending this week chilling in the air conditioning. The act of chilling is something new I'm trying out. I used to try to be so busy all the time, grinding, achieving, buying, investing, perfecting, comparing, chasing the success everyone talks about, defined by society as an abundance of money and friends and things. The more I did, the more I was worth to myself. I was ashamed of taking a break. I didn't even know who I was without all this busyness and hard work. It was like my identity. Mommy, how do you feel about Taiwan? I feel like a cooked chicken. But this summer and this entire year away from school, I really learned how to slow down. And I finally see the value in doing less stuff and making less money. Because sometimes that gives you more of what you actually need. I don't want my life to be about doing as much as humanly possible and always practicing self-discipline and prioritizing productivity to a point where I forget to prioritize myself. Growing up, I was told success was a combination of our salary and job title. But I've realized I'm so much happier measuring my success through my mental and physical health, my peace, enjoying my job, feeling fulfilled at the end of my day, days, conversations, and friendships, learning more about myself, having time to sleep and sweat and binge Netflix from time to time. So here's your reminder, especially with school coming up, that self-care, sleep, eating enough, making time for the people and activities that bring you joy, taking breaks, staying in, doing nothing for a couple of hours, it's all productive. I'm learning that time spent working on yourself is never wasted time. Give my love. <laughs> to my heart's content on this trip across Asia, like my belly and heart and soul were stuffed, but stuffed with so much joy instead of guilt. And there were so many moments where I felt immensely grateful for having put so much time and effort and sweat and tears into healing my relationship with food. Over the years, I have lived in so many different sizes and also become so many different versions of myself. And I have to admit, this has been my favorite version so far. Okay, 
I get questions all the time about how I don't feel guilty for gaining weight, for eating the foods I want, for not exercising for a month. Oh my god. How do you not hate your new body that weighs more? Okay, so the old me would see that she was three pounds heavier than what she thought she should be and would be truly devastated. I know it sounds dramatic, but it was a real feeling. It was a real fear, but being miserable just to maintain a number on a scale doesn't sound fun or healthy to me. And your weight, like the force exerted on your body by gravity, is like 150,000% the least interesting thing about you as a human. So why would we give it so much of our attention in the first place? I'm so much more interested in the number of places you've traveled to and what it was like there. How many days in a row could you eat your favorite food? Tell me about your favorite movie that you've watched at least 10 times. Tell me about how many times you've been in love. Like there are just so many more numbers and things that matter more. It's so hot. It's very pretty though, but so hot. Oh my God. And if I do gain weight while enjoying my trip and my summer while not stressing about food at all, I'm happily welcoming that extra weight. I'd be lying if I said I didn't care about this weight. I care about the weight gained in forms of ramen dates across Japan, exploring night markets in Taiwan, dining at hawker centers in Singapore, the weight gained while my mom tells me stories about her childhood, my grandparents, and what she felt like when she was my age over ice cream. The weight gained laughing, like deep belly, soulful laughing about nothing over greasy fried delicious food. The weight gained on a once in a lifetime trip with my mom at a time in our lives where I'm not held down by work or kids or obligations and neither is she. I care about that weight. I don't hate it. I'm grateful for it. Proud of it. For all of the memories and love it represents, how much growth it represents. This weight is the consequence of me finally living a full, happy, free, peaceful life. I'd trade the miserable, obsessive, empty, half-lived life I was used to living for this new weight on my body any day. I care about this weight because I care about my health. I'm healthier than I've ever been. Not the smallest, not the strongest, not the muscliest, but the healthiest and the happiest. I care about this weight because I've gained a life that finally feels full. Thank you, Taiwan. So I am sad to say goodbye to summer and these thick bangs, but I seriously can't wait for fall. Cozy vibes and warm drinks and pumpkin baked goodies. Anyways, go eat something yummy. I love you guys so much and I'll be eating with you again very soon. Don't forget to check out Ritual Sale that's going on. You can get 40% off if you scan the QR code on the screen or if you use the link in my description. Okay, bye. For real this time. <laughs>